So on that, John? As a good fellow? <laughs> I turn it over to you. We were saying yesterday there's, there's so many uh, fellow jokes that uh, I think there should be a prize for the, whoever can come up with the uh, most original fellow joke by the end of the week. Thank you, Grant. All right, so let's see if this uh, is still running since we turned it on before the last presentation. Apparently it is. Thank you, sir. All right. Let's see if... Uh, Ah, here we go. There's I squared C buses and display specs. And look, there we go. It detected the resolution and it worked. Well, hey. Okay, so, um, great. So, my name is John Masters. Uh, I'm chief arm architect um, at Red Hat. Um, and uh, I think most of you know uh, who I am. Uh, and uh, I think a lot of you guys would have seen the, the presentation I gave kind of this time last year. Um, did most of you seen that, I guess, right? So I wanted to give an update, uh, kind of where we've, where we've come uh, in the past year. Um, this is not going to be one of my ranting presentations about Go Standards Go. I think we've already kind of beaten that one to death. But I thought I'd give you an update on where we are um, and, you know, some of the fun stuff we're doing. So I'm going to mention some more uh, later on about a little program we have in Red Hat called our Early Access Program, which is kind of showcasing uh, with our partners what you know, enterprise software uh, should look like on ARM systems. And I'm going to come back to this later on, but um, you know, we've got three systems running here. Uh, these are three different ARM V8 architecture implementations. Um, I actually have another one in my hotel room. My, my hotel rooms tend to be filled with interesting toys. Um, and uh, so this one here is a Cavium Thunder X system. It's a 48-core uh, part that uh, was being discussed over the last couple of days. Uh, very nice to see this one join the family. Uh, we have here uh, an AMD Seattle platform. Um, that's an eight-core, you know, very, very standardized, um, you know, very, very conformant with all the specifications we've been building, as is Thunder, as is um, the third one here, which is a Applied Micro uh, Mustang reference platform. Um, and, uh, you know, there, there are three completely different architecture implementations from scratch done by three different teams, um, but they're compatible, they're conformant to the specifications we're building, um, and they're all running Red Hat's early access program operating system, uh, booting with all of the standards that, that I usually rant about. Um, and what these systems are running, actually, is a Ceph cluster. Um, so I can go ahead and... Just show you guys, we've got stats coming here from our Ceph cluster, and we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, and we've got, well, I've just gone ahead and pulled down a Linus tree. I've got a, a kernel uh, that I'll start building in a few minutes um, that's actually going to be stored uh, on that Ceph uh, block storage. But we'll come back to that. So let's see. So kind of where are we? What's our current status uh, today? So you know, the Lonaro Enterprise Group uh, is two years, two years strong at this point, I would say. Uh, we've been making wonderful progress. Uh, it's been uh, uh, fantastic working with Andrea, uh, with Grant, with uh, George, with David, with everybody else inside Lenaro. Um, we've come a long way in terms of core architecture enablement over the past couple of years. Uh, and at this point, you know, we're booting on everything from, you know, 8 to 48, and in fact, that number's out of date, uh, even higher core counts. Uh, we've been having discussions uh, in the community recently about you know, maximum core count numbers that, that might be present on ARM servers over the next few years. Um, I think that number will be north of uh, 1024 CPUs in a fully coherent ARM system within the not too distant future, which is kind of scary when you think about um, you know, where ARM has come from in a very, small, a very short amount of time. Um, Red Hat's interest is solely focused on 64-bit, so we have no interest in 32-bit uh, devices from a commercial point of view at all. Um, and what we're building is an entirely 64-bit uh, operating system. We also use you know, 64K uh, page sizes, granule sizes. We make various design choices that um, you know, really are intended to focus on a purely 64-bit world. Um, we are very, very excited by 
the standardization work that has been happening within Lunaro uh, and within the community. Uh, we are booting with UEFI and ACPI. Um, but again, that's my usual rant. Um, we're also using other you know, cool industry standards, like you know, SM BIOS, right? I know it sounds like a crufty old PC standard, but you know, when I'm on my ARM server now and I run DMI decode, I can see all the vendor information, all the model information, all these things that are you know, very, very useful if you are deploying servers uh, in an enterprise environment. And really, it's all about this, right? So you have this kind of this line, if you like. In order for us to succeed uh, in the enterprise market, uh, the joke I make is we have to first make it boring, then we make it exciting, right? But our entry point, we have to come into data centers over the next couple of years, and we have to say, uh, you know everything you already know? Here's something that does everything you already know and more. Um, and it has to be kind of, uh, you know, very familiar to people. Um, that line changes in another year or so, but, you know, we're focused right now on just kind of helping people uh, who want to migrate uh, to try a new architecture. Um, Red Hat announced our early access program uh, in July of 2014 uh, with kind of select partners, I guess. Uh, it's designed to showcase what we think an enterprise OS should look like, and it leverages all of the work being done in Lenaro, uh, inside LEG, uh, and in the upstream community. Um, we do semi-monthly software releases, and they are installable. You know, I never thought people would install ARM servers using DVDs that they put into physical media, right? But they're doing that. Um, and they can, and it just works. And it's kind of fun to see. Um, we have uh, our software available today in the Lenaro development cluster. So if people want to try that out, they can. They can also get access to the latest and greatest Fedora releases um, as well. So you can kind of sign up. You can say, I'd like to try a Red Hat thing. I'd like to try Fedora. You get a choice. Um, we're also working with Lenaro on the 96 boards uh, project. And uh, I've been very excited to be involved in some of the definitions of the enterprise designs that are coming down the pipe, uh, and also in working on projects like Hikey uh, to uh, you know, get good Fedora support there as well. So next steps, uh, you know, we're interested in taking this to, uh, I guess, to a logical conclusion at some point. Uh, in order to get uh, to, uh, to, a, to a point of, uh, uh, you know, having people use uh, enterprise technology in ARM servers in production. I think there's a few things we have left to complete over the course of the next year. Clearly, I'd like to see certain things upstreamed, like ACPI support um, and, uh, you know, some of these things. But also, we should focus on uh, kind of fit and polish features, like uh, kernel crash dump support. If you are deploying ARM servers, um, of course, they're perfect, and they never crash, and everything works great. Occasionally, uh, you know, something goes wrong, and you need to be able to get a crash dump. We need to complete efforts like this. We need to work on things like NUMA. Um, and we need to work on a few kind of gnarly, miscellaneous things. Um, for example, um, these systems are wonderful. They all have different consoles. Uh, and I can't be providing you know, kernel parameters that, that tell you where to output boot messages. Right? So we have standards that solve that. We have code that's going to solve that. The system's going to automatically detect where it sends its uh, diagnostic output. We're working on enabling that as well. Um, and finally, we want to enable the broader software ecosystem, right? So I've got a Ceph cluster here. Um, time permitting, we'll, we'll play some more with that uh, if, if there's time in a few minutes. Otherwise, we can uh, play with it uh, you know, later in the week. Um, what we're looking to do is you know, kind of take this operating system that we've got uh, and, uh, and build pieces on top. So that whether that's Ceph in storage or you know, OpenStack uh, deployments, um, and provide access to the software so that people who want to port their software uh, as an ISV or as a community member uh, onto an ARM V8 server, um, that they can do that as well. Uh, and I've been very excited over the last couple of days to kind of participate in um, the 96 boards conversations. Um, the first thing people did was start ranting about, you know, when can I get open source firmware and this and this and this? And my reaction was, I'm blown away that, that the day before, um, the cheapest board you could buy was 10 times as expensive, right? I'm still at that point of, oh, this is awesome. Um, and uh, everybody's moved on already, so that, that's, that's great. Um, if you'd like to learn more about trying, you know, what Red Hat's up to, uh, you can go to redhat.com forward slash arm. It's very, uh, very simple like that. 
Um, and you know, no cute embedded nonsense hacks were harmed in the making of this presentation. So uh, thank you very much. And I think we've got a, a Q&A session now with Grant. So if we have some time later, we can play with the, uh, the Ceph cluster as well.